Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to my workshop and another of a weekly dose of workshop Magnus. Magnus? <laughs> Well, hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to another week in the workshop with me, Dave Dickens. And well, this is part 14 of my bass guitar build in honor of Jurgen Zoller, one of our guitar building colleagues who sadly passed away earlier in 2023. And well, it's just a few days before Christmas and uh, all is quiet in the house. But what is happening in the workshop? Well, you'll have to stay tuned to find out. If you watched the last episode, what, you didn't watch the last episode, I'll put a link in it just up there. For those of you who did, you will know I left you all in a bit of suspense after a disastrous attempt to put some binding on my bass guitar i uh, had one last go at it at the end of the video and uh, well did it work well ladies and gentlemen let me show you there we go i think it did work <laughs> and um, i'm really pleased with the results Let's have a closer look. I had a real problem bending wood round this horn here and it kept splitting. And so um, in the end, I bent it on a, a very hot, small bending iron. And that seems to have done the trick. I, it's, it still needs to be pulled in a bit. It's quite tough there. I, I'm gonna have to um, put some wooden dust, I think, in there. But in general, the whole thing looks pretty good to me and it does what I wanted it to do and that was to tidy up this top edge. So if I turn it round and you'll see, you see it's a little bit ugly the way that the, the light wood finishes uh, and then it's not in line with the, the light wood on the bottom there. So I really wanted to cover that up and just soften it a bit and certainly that to me looks like it's done the job. So um, that's a good plus point. I am going to do something with this join and um, my mind's buzzing about what it is I'm going to do. I shall have to uh, consult my design expert, uh, Carolyn, my wife, uh, to see if she's got some ideas as well, which I'm sure she will have. But um, yeah, so what I'm going to do to start off with is get the other part of the binding on this side of the guitar. Right then, well, I've got the piece of wood that I tried to bend for the bottom section of this guitar uh, and it's all right, it didn't split. So um, I'm going to use it to, to, to have another go at it. Um, so what, what I found was I need to bend the, the horn first and I just need to make sure I've allowed enough wood at the back there. Um, so I'm going to mark where it really needs to bend and I'm drawing lines on here just to indicate where the sharp part of the bend is and where the more shallow part of the bend is. So it comes around there and then it's going to have to dip inside there. So here I'm just going to put a little arrow that way and at this end here I'll do the same thing. So that gives me an idea that that's got to go in. And the rest of it is quite a soft bend. Um, it's just round the back there. So I think that's going to be all right. Let's give it a go anyway. This is a soldering iron. Oh, I've just blocked it. <laughs> this is a soldering iron um, with some metal pipe screwed on around the edge. It gets really, really hot. And last year I managed to burn the skin off my wrists by just accidentally catching it. So I've got my gloves on, I've got my sleeves well down and um, my workpiece is well away from the iron. So once I've bent it, I move away. You've really got to be very careful. To be honest with you, it's why I like the other bending iron I've got because it doesn't get so hot. And that's uh, a lot safer. It only gets to about 90 degrees which would give you a little bit of a burn, but it's not anywhere near the heat of this thing. All right, so I'll get this bending. See, already I've got a nice bend on there. So this does do the job. It does do the job. Let's see how that's looking. 
that's looking pretty good actually. Um, so I'll just start this soft bend because it's a great idea marking it all up because as soon as I spray it with water it washes all off but uh, <laughs> yeah there we go you know I'm very much into sort of making music um, I have uh, Cubase on my computer and I really enjoy making up tunes all well, the backing music on these videos is uh, is made up in my little kit there and uh, but there's a load of videos coming out with all of this stuff creating music with AI and um, I have to say I just have one word to say for that why why on earth are we you know putting AI to use to basically replace people's creativity I just think we should have a slogan that says something like keep creative native because quite honestly I just think it's a complete waste a of the technology and at the end of the day you know what are us humans going to be doing if AI just takes over all the creative parts of our lives I mean it's just it's just ridiculous isn't it there are such a lot of things that uh, that technology could be put to use to do you know searching for drugs to cure cancers and you know illnesses that we've never really got cures for but uh, I don't know what you feel about it <laughs> but every time I see one of these videos oh we've used AI to create a, a song or create a graphic or I just think why 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 do it i mean i'll be honest with you when i started work uh i was in my teens that was quite a while ago um it was really before computers had taken off and one of uh, my colleagues brought in a, a programmable calculator and i thought it was marvelous <laughs> and uh, i went and got myself one it was a small bright orange Sinclair calculator made by Clive Sinclair the chap who who came up with the ZX Spectrum and the ZX81 and uh, well it fascinated me the idea that you could get a machine to uh, to do things for you was a bit of a an eye-opener for me I remember the first thing I did when I got one and that was there's, there's a game a guessing game where somebody has to think of a number and you have to try and guess the number and they can just tell you whether your guess is higher or lower than the number and that intrigued me because I thought wow can I program this calculator so that I can think of a number and it can guess it and uh, of course it's a quite a simple program and basically you know you just divide <laughs> the uh, sort of remainder of the between the number and the, the one you thought of in half and uh, eventually you get uh, get to the number that the other person thought of not described that particularly well but I hope you get the gist of it uh, and that well I started off in photography an industrial photographer uh, but uh, that experience sent me on a quest to become a programmer so you know I am really grateful of computer technology and I, I was intrigued by by the idea that uh, a machine could effectively think but when it comes to AI I think that's a whole different ball game you know I understand that people are inquisitive and um, you know with any new technology you want to find out what it can do and um, well I met somebody on holiday uh, earlier in the year who had um, got chat GBT to write all the text for his website and um, well it was very good I can't, <laughs> there's no doubt about it I mean it did what he wanted it to do but uh, yeah no it's taking the fun out of life that will take the fun out of life let's put it to use useful things not creative things let me know what you think in the comments anyway I think I'm getting there now this is looking pretty good 
I think what I'm going to do is cut a piece of that off because it's, it's a bit of a nuisance. It's getting in the way. It'll stop me actually clamping that down properly. The problem um, I want to try and avoid here is, is the problem that I got with the, the last piece. And that is, because I had to start round at this end, um, I ended up being a bit short at this end. So what I'm going to do with this is, is actually cut it off just before I finally stick it down. So everything will be taped up to that point. Um, I think that's going to be about where I need to cut it. But uh, yeah, we'll see. So first of all, let's cut that off and then get gluing. All I'll say is twice burnt, very nervous. I'm going to move this right out of the way. You know, this hastily put together piece of wood is probably the most used tool in my workshop. It's uh, really, really useful. Right. Let's just take a little bit off the end here. That should do it. Now I wonder how long it will be before somebody hooks an AI up to a CNC machine and just says, uh, make me a 1959 Les Paul and uh, the thing goes away and does it. I mean, let's be honest, ladies and gentlemen, that really would take the fun out of life, wouldn't it? Right, I've got some glue. I've got some veneer. Let's get gluing. Right, I think I'm ready this time. Um, I've got some tape ready to stick on. I've got a little block here, which I'm going to put underneath the guitar because it helps when you're trying to stick the tape on. Um, I've also put a brand new battery in the uh, camera, so we should be okay to go. And uh, well, it's just a question of uh, gluing it all up. Oh, by the way, I thought I'd uh, create a disco track for this uh, edition of the uh, my video because um, well we're near Christmas and sort of discos are, are what's in the air at the moment so uh, yeah hope you enjoy my disco attempt completely non AI <laughs> Well, I hope you enjoyed that track because this glue up was a real song and dance, I can tell you. Uh, halfway through, the other side popped off at the end there. So I've had to clamp that all up again and I've clamped all this up the best I can. And well, we'll just have to see what happens. <laughs> well, I'm back in the workshop and it's a very wet day and well, it looks like the binding has stuck. In fact, I popped in yesterday and took all the tape off. And I've also put some, a little bit of filler in the end there because it was, uh, you know, that bit of a mistake that I made <laughs> where the uh, jack socket's gonna go. Anyway, um, so it's looking really good. It's gotta be sanded down and uh, sort of flattened out on the top there. But before I do that, I've had an idea of what I'm gonna do on the sides. Now the guitar has got a very organic look about it so I've been looking on the side here and I think I'd like to carry that through 
and so I'm not sure if you can see this but we've got this mahogany here sort of finishing there and the ash coming on and what I want to do is extend this mahogany so it comes right down here he says hoping that you can see that and, and sort of joins up with the ash on the back just about there now then I'll pick up my bit of mahogany that I've just dropped oh there we go I've got this off cut here which uh, the beauty of mahogany is that the, the sort of grain looks so similar that I think I can disguise that pretty well. Now then, on the other side, we've got the same thing occurring. Here you see the ash finishes there and the mahogany finishes there. So if I carry that line through, take it right the way down to here, then I sort of meet up with where the mahogany comes in there. So. I think that's going to look quite nice so again let's see if we can do some a nice sort of curve with it so I think I need a template got myself a strip of white paper to the depth of the body here uh, which is a, an inch deep so I'll put that line there on the line of the the join there so now I just need to mark where I want this uh, mahogany to cut into so it's going to start about there and it's going to go through to about there okay so I've got my two marks let's see if I can do a curve now okay I've just marked which is the top so I know what I'm doing uh, okay so let's see if we can get a nice curve and I'm wondering if something like that is going to look good so let's draw a line magic now I sort of don't want a straight line with a join with this mahogany against the mahogany so what I'm going to do is actually mirror that that uh, curve over here and create a piece like that now, I'm hoping that this this join here is going to be quite invisible but um, if it isn't at least there's some sort of shape to it so I'm going to try this side first. If it works, we'll try the other sides. I've cut it out and uh, well, this is how it's going to look. You ought to imagine that this is not going to be white. It's going to be mahogany. Um, I think it could work, you know. <laughs> so let's cut this shape out of a piece of mahogany. I only need a really thin piece of wood. So I've cut this uh, piece down uh, and I'm going to cut it to about two mil thick because it only needs to be a veneer so uh, let's see if we can do this that's a really nice blade I've got on there it's a 4 TPI blade from Axminster but it's very nice so I've got um, I've actually got one which is just under one mil thick <laughs> and I've got one which is two mil thick um, so I think I'll just sand these down a bit get them nice and smooth and we'll see which is the best one to use well I think it's got to be the one that's uh, just under a mil because I think that's the one that's going to fit in here best to be honest with you um, yeah I think and the grain isn't too bad either so uh, I think that's going to look all right okay so let's cut the shape out now i tell you what it's a bit chilly in this workshop i was editing my rant about ai uh yesterday and just realized there's like steam coming out of my mouth <laughs> oh dear it is a little bit chilly anyway so i'm going to put this little template on there like so just hold it still I think I might put a little bit of double sided on there. I've got no nails because I play guitar, I keep my nails short. And that uh, makes it difficult to peel that tape off. Right. Okie doke. So now what I'm going to do is just score around this with a sharp blade. Like 
so I'm probably covering up what I'm doing so I apologize for that okay that should be it now if we just lift that off hopefully we can lift off the tape leaving the bit that we need to cut there we go oh, peeled some of the grain off there which is really helpful isn't it that will be sanded down so I won't worry about that okay so now let's cut this out with a knife So here we go, that's where it's going to fit. Now it's a question of cutting it out uh, of this guitar. So what I've done, I've got some masking tape on there. I've got masking tape and double sided tape on the back of this. I'm going to position it where I want it to go. There. I think that looks about right. I can actually move this way a little let's try again trying to match with the top there so it sort of comes down from that point there and then on the back finishes where the ash sort of starts so i think that's about right i think this is going to be a job for some fine chisels and uh wood carving tools and a knife um, I haven't got to go too deep as I say it's just less than a millimeter thick this wood so yeah we'll try it anyway here we go my first mistake in positioning this yeah I've got it completely wrong so Right, we need to move this. We need to move this, Dave. We need to move it. So much for my lining all up and everything. It must go there. It must go there. And you know what? It's, it's good. It's good. It's okay. It's going to be okay. I'll save myself cutting that ah, in the wrong place. Right, got myself a nice sharp blade.
this seems to fit okay now but I think I'm gonna glue that in it looks pretty good you know I can I can't fully match the grain there but um, I think it looks much better than the sharp line that I had before so there's a helicopter going over so actually just a little bit more sanding to do there I think I think we'll get the glue you know get it stuck down okay let's see if we can get this glued right so I'm going to put on these soft pads on there put that on the top of there and then I can reach over and grab this clamp just realize that the angle of this is not quite right so let's adjust the angle so now then, can I get this clamp in underneath there and onto there? I think that's going to be enough pressure. Well now you know you can't rush a guitar build so I am going to let that cure thoroughly before I do anything else with this guitar and because it's a little bit close to Christmas uh, I'm going to be taking a few days break and so I shall be back in the new year. Well I mean this year has been absolutely fantastic I've learned an awful lot uh, of my acoustic adventures so I'm going to play you out with some of the uh, highlights uh, from the year. And uh, before I do that, I just want to wish you all a very Merry Christmas and I hope it's a peaceful one. And uh, I wish you all the best for the new year and I hope to uh, see you in the new year and I hope you'll join me with these video series because it's been an absolute joy and thank you so much for all your comments and for watching me. So without further ado, okay, Big DJ D, are you ready? It's all gold, bro. Hit that button. Cheers.